Hey, it's Captain Roger. We're out for a walk. As we walk with God by walking through the Bible, particularly here towards the end of Deuteronomy, we run across a lot of things that look and sound horrible. There's a reason for that, which I think is best explained by pointing out that people do horrible things to each other. We perpetrate all kinds of foolish, violent, racist, sexist, and just plain selfish behaviors, most of which rotate around our own cruelty and cravings and not at all around the things or ideals of God. For some reason, though, when these things get mentioned in the Bible, there are those who seize on them as if they are things that God approves of or encourages, when often exactly the opposite is true. The problem tends to lie with the fact that human beings are not very good at change. We're built for adaptability and growth, and God spends all of his interaction with us trying to encourage those behaviors. But we seem to prefer to curl into our own shells of comfort and tradition and stay there instead. For example, in the time of Moses, there was a way for a man to take a wife that went like this. During a raid on an enemy town or tribe or nation, he would see a woman he found attractive. He would kill the others in her home, all of her family members, and then rape her, making her his property. And if he got tired of her at some point, he could sell her or discard her. This, by the way, if there was any doubt, is horrible and unacceptable behavior. And the fact that there were so many cultures who operated this way is appalling. Through Moses, God issued this command to his people. When you take captives from your enemies, and you take a beautiful woman to be your wife, you must bring her into your home and allow her the dignity of new clothing and a month or more to live as a member of the household and properly mourn her parents. After that, the marriage could be consummated but with the requirement that she be a full wife, not a slave, not property. And if you were to divorce her, you were required to free her where she wanted to go and how she wanted to go. And any dishonor at all belonged to the husband, not to her. Now, this was a huge step in the right direction, but it wasn't intended to be a guide for single men looking to avoid the dating scene. This is what's called a redemptive movement. God wanted people to get back to the ideal he'd originally established between spouses, lifelong monogamy, mutual respect, and acting towards one another in love. But we had gone so far from that, he wanted to get us started by having us take a small step. Stop treating a spouse like disposable property that could be taken or given away. It wasn't that he wanted us to only go this far. He wanted us to get past this and move to a higher level, which is what walking with God is about. Staying with him, we learn to grow, and that brings us change, and we get closer to being the people that we were created to be. For me, finishing this walk here today is part of my growth for the day. So I'm gonna do that. Grace and peace to y'all. See you tomorrow.